welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And my name is Jason Newland. I'm trying to think what I normally say at the beginning of these. Oh yeah, only listen or watch this video or listen to the podcast if you can safely close your eyes. So, if you're digging a well, mining for gold, you know, maybe don't listen to this at those times. If you're a driving instructor, or maybe you're just about to jump out of a plane with a parachute on your back. Well, hopefully you do have a parachute on your back, but this isn't the right thing to be listening to. You know, if you, basically any time when you need to have a degree of awareness or not even a degree of awareness, I guess that's kind of total awareness, isn't it? If you're jumping out of a plane, or total stupidity, it depends which way you look at it. But um, <laughs> this could also, yeah, this sleep session may cause drowsiness. So I haven't, oh, my chair is getting squeakier. I haven't recorded one of these for a few days, or a couple of days, two or three days, I don't know. And I do believe this is number 22 which is pretty good for me. I think the most amount of sessions I've ever done in a, a series is the daily relaxation for stress and anxiety that I did last year. They lasted for 34 days but that was 34 days in a row. So I haven't done, oh, that was a weird noise. I haven't done these every day for 22 days. Right, I'm uh, leaning all the way back now. Tonight is the elections, the local elections around my country. When I say my country, I don't mean that I own this island. When I say Ireland, I mean I don't mean Ireland as in the country Ireland. I mean as in the England. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't own it, but I say mine because the majority of people that listen to my stuff and watch my stuff is, are from other countries around the world. So, God, that, that was a long version, wasn't it? That was... That was even more boring than I was intending for it to be. 
So the point of these sessions really is just for me to waffle on and talk. There may be background sounds. And that's okay. You may hear Andre jump up out of his bag and start scratching or run over and do a whoopsie on the paper. And if you're not sure what a whoopsie is, then you need to research 1970s sitcoms. Frank Spencer from Some Mothers Do Have Them used to say about the dog the dog's done a whoopsie on the carpet Boo Betty Now that might not have been the best impression of Frank Spencer ever done, performed, however, if you don't know who Frank Spencer is and you've never heard of the program, then that is the best impression of Frank Spencer that you've ever heard. So I, I'll take that, I'll take that as a, as a gold star of impressionism, impressionisticism, doing impressions. I don't do many impressions really, I used to do I used to do an impression of Richard Pryor. But the thing is with impressions, I find that I need to put a bit of uh, effort. I don't mean that I'm too lazy to actually do them. I don't mean I have to put effort in. You know, not in the sense of a problem with eating, I have to put the effort of, you know, lifting the food to my mouth and chewing and I don't mean like that, I don't mean incredible laziness, I mean, it takes a bit of effort vocally, which means that I'd need to speak a bit louder and, you know, if I start talking up really loudly or shouting it would uh, wouldn't really fit in with this session although I am feeling a bit of gas building up inside my tummy you know that feeling when you get you can feel the gas is there there's not much going on but it's like you can feel there's a a knock at the back door you know it's, and the gas is waiting to for the back door to open kind of I don't know if that makes sense but I'm going to keep that door shut while I talk to you so thank you to those of you on YouTube for your lovely comments and your support and I was planning to actually make a list of people who had left comments and thanked them like, on, on this session. And I'd like, I'd like to tell you that I forgot to do it. 
but if I'm honest, yeah, I, I thought about doing it. And that's as far as I got. I genuinely couldn't be bothered. And um, it sounds bad, maybe, that, you know, I do like getting comments, but I didn't care enough to <laughs> write a list of the people that wrote the comments. That's just laziness, I suppose, and it could, you know, I think part of these, part, part of these sessions is for you to just maybe relax, you know, let go with maybe less and less external stimulation. You know, as time goes by, and if I started reading your name out, and you know, I don't know about you, but if I was listening to a recording and my name is mentioned, I might weed myself with excitement. You know, I'd, I'd get a bit all. I remember when I was young. I remember the days when I used to say I remember when I was younger. Now it is officially I remember when I was young. And I was in hospital with I think I'd had my appendix out. I've been in hospital twice. Two different operations. I guess it wouldn't be well, I suppose it could be the same operation but it means the hospital didn't do a very good job the first time, I guess. And also, it's my appendix, so you can't can't have them out twice. I don't know if you knew this, but apparently, I didn't really want this to be some graphic um, description of surgery or anything like that but apparently if uh, somebody goes to hospital and they the doc you know the, the surgeon opens the you know to give to take her appendix out anyway appendectomy or whatever it's called even if the appendix are fine you know, open up the appendix instead of being all rumbled and maybe in a bit of a mess. They open up and they see the appendix sitting there in a deck chair with shades on, drinking a shandy. You know, it's just having a whale of a time. It's just like they still have to take out the appendix and not allowed to leave them in. And I remember I, I said to the nurse, I said, why is that? And part of the reason why I was asking her, was her name was Nurse Nichols. And I think I was about 12 years old. I really, really fancied her. I really, really liked her. She was old, but in reality, she probably wasn't old. She's probably only maybe 20, 21, 22, something like that. But you know, she's for me, she was a lot older, but I really, really liked her. Anyway, that's why I was talking to her. It wasn't the only reason I was talking to her. I also saw her as a human being. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't that I was obsessed with with her or anything like that. It, you know, I was. Yeah, you know, I didn't pretend to have appendicitis so I could get into the ward, so I could talk to that nurse. I mean, it wasn't anything weird like that. I 
genuinely was in there to have an operation. There's you know, no pretense involved really. But anyway, she, I say really, I mean, you know, completely, really. So, you know, sometimes when people say the word really after something, it's like they're maybe questioning it themselves. Yeah. I wouldn't ever want to do anything like that. I'm not, not really. Okay. I'd never steal your car. Not really. So, um, I was talking to Nurse Nichols. And it shows, actually, before I tell you what I said to her, I, the fact that I remember her name and what am I, 47 now, so 12, I'm just going to work out how many years it is, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. So over 10 years, and notice how my voice started getting posher. I started to talk more clearly and much more nicer. As I was counting, I started off like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, it's weird, isn't it? Voices. You know, I know people that. Now, if you say to them, oh, uh, something like that to them, and say, oh, well, I was in the hospital, and oh, this thing happened in 1997. Like I say, I got into the hypnosis. And in 1998, actually January, and I say to him, yeah, that was, that was over six years ago. And I've done this with quite a few people over the years, just through, I don't know, just through boredom I suppose in some ways just something to do maybe I'd run out of chocolate or didn't need to go to the toilet for a while so I had nothing to look forward to so I thought just I'd say this to people so well, yeah it's over six years and it always sort of seemed to feel the need to say no it's 20 years that's 20 years ago I said yeah, that's what I said. It's over six years ago. No, but it's 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years is over six years ago, isn't it? Some people really struggle with that. Maybe it's a little bit naughty of me, I don't know. So Nurse Nickel. I wonder if her name was Nurse Nicole or Nurse Nichols. Nurse Nicol, Nurse Nichols. Well, I'm not sure. I suppose it doesn't really matter for the sake of the story. Oh, I do. 
do like to try and be red relatively precise at times sometimes if I'm going to use a person's real name then I try to use it correctly but I don't know what her first name was because you know I thought I knew a name but turned out her first name wasn't Nurse which came as a shock. I remember I gave her a, as she left, I gave her a hard piece of fruit. It was one of four bits. I don't know which, which fruit it was I gave to her. I might have given her a banana. Because I do like bananas. And I think sometimes if you give someone something that you like in some ways it's it feels perhaps nicer to giving someone something that they like although in other ways perhaps giving something somebody something that they like would seem a, a little bit more considerate especially if the thing you've given to them that you like is something that they perhaps don't like for example if you're with somebody with a a nut allergy and you keep buying them chocolates with nuts in you know if you're like got a relationship with someone that has a nut allergy keep buying them for, as presents Christmas birthdays uh, you know wedding anniversaries things like that if you keep buying them chocolates and sweets and cakes that have nuts in them you get to eat them yourself so it's just quite good no it's not it's probably not very considerate though Nichols or Nurse Nickel. I remember her name or the surname anyway. After all those years since the age of 12. What was it? 12, uh, 22, 12, 22, 32, 42. So that's 35 years. under 40 years ago and I remember her name but I don't remember the names of some of the people that I've been in relationships with I don't mean while I was with them. Though that can get a little bit awkward. There was one time. And. I was kind of dating a waitress. But well, her job was a waitress. I didn't class her as a waitress. I classed her as an, you know, human being. You know, it wasn't. I don't class people or judge them by the jobs they have or by the type of shoes they wear or you know what kind of wheelbarrow they may use in the garden. I don't, you know, I don't judge. 
judge people in those ways and I wasn't with her long enough to really discover too much about her gardening activities I didn't see any of her gardening tools or a shed or anything like that and that's not a euphemism I'm talking about actual Myself off guard there. <laughs> right, I'm back. I'm back. Hopefully, you're all asleep so you didn't hear that. has ever been used as a euphemism ever it's a, a weird one if it if it has been or a wheelbarrow that'd be strange anyway i'm back on track i'm with you i'm here um this person that I was seeing this lady that I was seeing my fridge has just come on in the kitchen when I say come on I'm, I mean it's switched itself on there's no um, anyway I forget about that Actually, what's weird is she said, you've forgotten my name, haven't you? I said, no, of course not. And she said, what is it then? I said, what's what? She said, well, she said what, what do you mean, what's what? I said, I said, what? She said, are you trying to evade the question? I said, um, do you mean evade or avoid? She said, well, what's the difference? I'm not really sure. I mean, obviously they're spelt differently and they're pronounced differently, but I don't know. Evade, evade feels more like moving to one side and letting the thing go by you, you know? So if someone's chucking a tennis ball at you, evading something feels, I don't know, in my mind it's kind of like, uh, if you play dodgeball, it's you, you move to the side so the ball goes past you and it doesn't hit you. If you're going to avoid the ball, you don't turn up to the game. 
you know, if you want to avoid getting hit by the tennis ball, you just don't turn up. So it's, I suppose, I said to her, if I was going to avoid the question, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I suppose, you know, I don't know what you think. She said, well, I suppose you make a good point. I've never really thought about it like that before. I mean, admittedly, I use the word avoid a lot more often than I would use the word evade. And you know, even just saying the word evade, it's starting to sound wrong, like it's not a real word. And I said, well, now you say that, it does sound a bit weird, but maybe if you finish eating your cornflakes, you know, crunch it up, swallow it, and try and say the word without food in your mouth. Maybe it, it will sound a bit different. And she said, well, I don't know what she said, because she had cornflakes in her mouth and I couldn't really understand it. But um, eventually she, she started talking and she said, uh, what is it you've got against cornflakes? I said, what? She said, you know I like cornflakes. Why can't you accept that I enjoy eating cornflakes? What's the problem? I said I don't have a problem with cornflakes. Do you have to eat them when you're on the toilet? And she said, I don't have to. I choose to. This is my home. And the idea for me in having my own home is to have a safe space to be able to do whatever feels comfortable for me. So if I want to sit down, put food in, one end, new food, and let the old food out the other end, then I'll do that. And I said, okay, but do you have to do it when I'm in the bath? And she said, oh, Oh, to be honest, I wasn't sure what was going to come next because either she was going to say something that might turn into some kind of a not the most enjoyable interaction, or she was just. trying to think of something to say. And then she looked around. For some reason, I never know why, she picked up a toilet roll 
not the one that was on the the hook, you know, the toilet roll holder, if you want to call it that. But she picked one up off the shelf because we had the toilet rolls on a shelf just above. It was kind of like head height when you're sitting down on the toilet. So she picked one up. she just rolled it gently out of the bathroom and it just travelled into the living room I didn't really understand why she did that It's a very good distracting technique. And the other thing that was good about her doing that it gave me a little bit of time to think about what next I'm gonna say. She said, don't tell me what to do when I'm on the toilet, and I won't tell you what to do, or what not to do when you're in the bath. stand up in the bath I pull the plug out of the you know of the plug hole so the water starts to drain away and I'll dry my hair first I think at that time my hair was still quite short but longer than it is now and what I do then is I have a towel on the floor I lean onto the sink, make sure that I've got a very firm grip, and I put, generally it's my left foot first, out onto the towel that's on the floor, and then I maneuver my body so the I feel comfortable physically. And then I move my right foot over the bath side or the side of the bath onto the I want to say carpet but it's not right, it's the towel. And it's a special towel. And by that I don't mean it's not really special at all it's just one that I stand on but I keep it before that it's the standing on towel that's, that's pretty much the whole not really much else I mean the one I've got at the moment is green 
that's my regular standing on towel. So I got out of the bath and then what I do is I dry myself off. And I generally start with I don't know, possibly the back of my neck my neck, my, my shoulders, my arms, under my arms, my chest, and my stomach, the bits I shall not mention, they get a bit of a dab, and uh, then I rub, you know, dry my legs, and all those bits at the back and I try and like get hold of each side of the towel and try and dry my back and I think the last thing I dry is my toes because even though the bottoms of my feet are generally fairly dry because the towel, the special towel, I mean the one I've got now is it's a green towel, my special standing on towel after having a bath, it soaks up the water from the bottoms of my feet but the sometimes the toes a little bit of water like on top or like in between or sometimes even on top of the feet or on top of my feet I can't talk for everybody I can only really talk about my own feet and so I give them a little dab and dry them off and then I'm pretty much set to go I put my dressing gown on and any bits of water that maybe I missed especially on my back because it's not always so easy to get everything the dressing gown generally soaks up whatever's left it was very very kind of it and then I get some tissue paper and I dry off my face so I never use a towel to dry my face and then chuck the tissue in the toilet my girlfriend at the time said could you please wait until I've finished before chucking stuff in there because it's just hitting me and it's not going in the toilet and I said sorry I forgot you were there I thought this was a normal household or I could just have a bath you know just normally get up and dry off on my standing on towel that's not green at the moment but will be green when I'm in my late 40s and then what I do is I still do this now is I have face moisturiser so I put moisturiser on my face and my neck, face and neck, back of my neck as well, just to moisturize my skin on my face. And a few other little bits, but what I don't mean, I put it on a few other little bits, I mean, I do a few other bits whilst I'm in the bathroom, but pretty much that's it. And then I went out and 
come into the bedroom and my girlfriend at the time she she followed me like a couple of seconds later into the, the bedroom she said uh, I asked you a question and I said Okay, I'll, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. And she said, what? I said, well, I've got two. You said you have two questions for me. I said, yeah. I'll answer your one question if you answer my two questions. And she said, that doesn't really seem fair, does it? How come you get two questions and I only get one? I said, I don't know. I haven't really given it that much thought. To be honest with you, I, mean, I didn't even know we were going to have this conversation. And she said, no, not me neither, really. And she said to me, okay, what were your, what were your questions? I said, well, firstly, why didn't you flush the toilet just now? And secondly, did you wash your hands? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, you, you just come, followed me pretty much out of the bathroom. I'm not even sure if you wiped. And she said, that's very rude of you. I said, I'm sorry. she said that didn't sound very sincere and I said that I know because it wasn't she, she said what do you mean it wasn't well it wasn't sincere it's very hard to sound sincere insincerely that's the whole point of sounding insincere Otherwise, how would we know if somebody was being insincere, if they sounded sincere? She said, what, what are you talking about? And I, I kind of wasn't sure myself. It was sort of one of those moments, you know, when I thought, Ah, oh, this is this, this will sound clever. Ah, oh, this will sound good. Oh, this will be this will be something to be able to tell people one day. Yeah, maybe one day in the future, twenty five years time, I'll I'll make a recording of it, and I'll and I'll talk about it in a recording. And during that recording, I'll also talk about garden sheds and who knows what else. And she said, okay, well, I've answered your questions. I don't know what you're talking about, about future recordings and stuff. I'm not really sure what that was, was all about, but... Uh, okay so what's your question she said I asked you earlier what well, you want to know what I get up to in the bath she said no I know what you get up to I've seen the bath afterwards So what do you mean? She said, dirt doesn't float around in the bath water like that. 
So what do you, what do you mean, like, like what? She said the other day, I went into the bath. Remember that day when you said, you can have the bath after me if you want, you can use it after me, do you remember? And I said, yeah. I felt quite good inside, thinking, well, of helping to, you know, save on water, helping to save the planet. And also I got to have a bath first, so that was quite good. And I said, yeah, I remember that. I didn't completely remember it, but I kind of, kind of remembered it. It's one of those, those unimportant memories that are stored just in case somebody wants to talk about it. Something that's just, you know, a bit like a, a bit like a family wedding, you know. Something that's happened, you're quite happy just to move on from. But someone might mention it and you'll be able to say, oh yeah, yeah. I remember when Dad got married. That was good, yeah. Andre's just got up and he's running around. I don't know what he's going to be doing. I apologise in advance. And she said to me, well, after you'd been in the bath and you'd gotten out and you went and sat down and I can't remember what you were doing. You were sitting down doing something. And I said, okay, well, this isn't a very interesting story. She said, well, it's not really about what you were doing when you were sitting down. I said, well, what is it about? She said, it's about the bath. A bath? Are you still talking about the bath? She said, yes, I'm talking about the bath. What do you mean, when you were on the toilet? She said, no, I'm not talking about the bath when I was on the toilet just now. We've moved on from there. And then part of me felt quite grateful that we moved on, but I was a little bit confused how we'd moved on, but yet we were still talking about the bath an hour and a half later. And... Uh, said when I went into the bathroom after you'd been in there in the bath and I was going to use the bath water after you and I said oh, are you really why don't you just run a fresh bath and she said well I said why, why would you use someone else's dirty water she said, but that was your idea. Conserving water, saving the planet, keeping down the bills, That's, wasn't that your idea? And I said, oh yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, I remember. We were talking about that at your, your brother's wedding, weren't we? She said, what? Well, I said, oh, don't worry. And she said, anyway, when I went into the bath room and saw the bath, it looked like there was these little miniature stingrays floating, these white stingrays floating all around the water. Like just long, slimy things. And I said, 
sit. Yeah. And she said, yeah. I said, what? I just said, yeah, to you. And you said, yeah, back to me. It's not really much of a conversation, really, is it? And she said, no. And then I got, I got a little bit concerned because when it turns into a one answer situation, it's kind of, there's a flip side, you know, there's a good side to it, there's a not so good side. The not so good side would be that the communication between us is clearly breaking down. But on the plus side, the conversations are a lot quicker. And I said to her, okay, well, what is that question? He said, what, what question? Well, I said, before you start talking about the bath, you said that you had a question for me and you'd already asked me the question and I was trying to evade it or avoid it, one of them. And she said, oh yeah. I remember we were talking about that, weren't we? It seems ages ago that we were talking about avoiding and evading and what's the difference between the two. And you said something about balls and tennis balls and um, evading being something that you could kind of maybe dodge. Something that's heading towards you but avoiding would be making sure you're nowhere near anything so that you don't have to evade anything because you're, nothing's gonna come near you to start with because you're avoiding that situation, perhaps. Isn't that what you meant? I said, oh, I don't know. I don't wanna talk about it anymore. I don't wanna talk about evading and avoiding and. Perhaps we can talk about it another time. I'd just like to just, to just sort out what. If there's something troubling you, I want to sort it out. That's all, because I care. Plus, the X Factor starts soon. And I want to watch television. And she said. You know, some things perhaps you should just keep to yourself. You don't have to verbalize every thought that you have. And I said, trust me, I really don't verbalize every thought I have. And she said, well, what does that mean? Well, trust me means, believe me, you know, believe, please trust in what I say. She said, no, that's, that's not the bit that I was questioning. I do understand general grammar and, you know, the meaning of sentences. I've, uh, I've been through the same educational uh, channels and processes that you've been through. I went to school and... I said, can I stop you there? She said, why, what's wrong? I said, nothing, I just, I don't know if I wanna hear about you going to school. She said, why not? I said, well, I don't know how relevant it is to what we're talking about right now. And she said, oh, okay, fair enough. 
and then there was this like silence. And she she said, uh, "Do you want an ice ice lolly?" I said, "Well, not really." She said, "Why not?" I said, "Well." It's November and the ball is broken and I'm cold and the last thing I want to do right now is put in something that's icy inside my body. She said, I'm, I'm, she said to me, I'm, I'm talking about eating it. I said, so am I. That's what I'm also talking about. She said, well, why didn't you get the boiler fixed? I said, I'm waiting for the person who fixes the boiler to come along. But I couldn't get an appointment until tomorrow. She said, well, I thought you were doing it today. I said, I did do it today. I did call them today. But they couldn't come out till tomorrow. But they're coming early in the morning. So we just got to get through the evening. And just keep each other warm and we'll be fine. And she said, yeah, but I've got to go to work. I didn't know what to say. Sometimes I struggle when it's not that I don't understand what work means. I do understand the concept. I couldn't figure out how that was relevant to what we were talking about. So I said, I don't, what would you mean you've got to go to work? And she said, well, my sh I've got a shift tonight. I'm working tonight. I said, yeah. But we were talking about the boiler. Being broken. And the boiler cut man or woman. I'm not sure who. Um although his name is Robert so I'm guessing it's a man but I don't want to discriminate and she said yeah and I said to her yeah but he's coming tomorrow morning how does that affect you going to work she said it doesn't I said, oh, I'm confused, I said to her. She said, look, I'm working late, which means I'll be getting home late, which means I don't really want to be woken up early in the morning by the boiler man coming. And I said, oh, I understand. She said, do you though? Do you really understand? I said, yeah, I do. I've been woken up before. I used to have an alarm clock once. It used to wake me up regularly. She said, how is that the same thing? But I said, well, it's annoying, maybe. Is that what you're saying? You might be annoyed to be woken up by the boiler man. And she said, no, it's I just need to get enough sleep. That's all. 
I said, I understand that. I'll tell you what, I'll make sure that I am at the front door and answer the door before the boiler man even gets a chance to knock and I'll take him through to the boiler and I'll keep the bedroom door closed and you won't have to hear a thing and then when he's gone I'll leave you asleep and if you want give me a time you want to get up and I'll wake you up with a, a nice cup of tea and some cornflakes and I saw her eyes light up which is weird and I understood that her eyes just became different colours sometimes eyes turned orange never understood why and she said you know what I said I don't know what she said sometimes you you can be quite kind and I said oh, thank you You're not too bad yourself. She said, don't you think that I'm kind? I said, yeah, you're sure you have been kind in the past. Before you, before you met me. She, she, then I started laughing because I was just joking. I said, I think you're lovely. And she said, really? And I said, yeah. I wouldn't say it. I don't say things I don't mean. Unless I'm trying to get something. You know, unless I'm trying to just lie in to get my own way. And she said, what? She said, do you like, do you like to get your own way? I said, no, not really, it's just a joke. She said, I don't, you know, I don't want to be manipulated by anybody. I said, well, in that case, don't watch television. She said, but I like television. I said, me too. Especially the X Factor, which has already started and I'm missing. She says, well, you go and watch The X Factor and I'll finish getting ready and I'll, maybe we can have a cup of tea before I go. I said, well, what time have you got to leave? She said, about half seven. Quarter to eight, something like that. I said, but The X Factor will still be on. Can you not just have a cup of tea in the kitchen on your own? And she gave me a look, which I think I got a sense of maybe I'd said the wrong thing. And I tried to turn it into a joke. I said, and maybe um, you can drink the tea on the toilet. Or you do everything else. And she didn't find that funny. And we ended up having an arm wrestle. And she won. I still got to see most of the X Factor. And just as she was leaving, she said, oh, by the way, what is my name? I said, what? And I was at this point, I was looking at the telly. And I was thinking, because 
on memory I don't always remember names very well and I think the pressure of trying to remember something it, my mind kind of went a bit blank and this is where everything came together nicely I said of course I remember your name I turned around to smile at her to let her know that give her the look really that means it doesn't matter about names it's about love it's about kindness it's about you know all the other things that we're supposed to have and luckily she had her uniform on which had a name badge and it got me out of a very awkward situation that's a short version of that story the long version involves marshmallows and quite a lot of lemonade so yeah again I think Possibly come to the end of this thing, whatever it is. Let me bore you to sleep and it's just me talking. And I'm gonna go and have give myself something to eat, a little a little nibble, a little bit of chocolate maybe, just for me. So that's it. Take care of yourselves and I will speak to you next time. Lots of love.